Okay, this problem is about an elevator, and we're looking at a 60 kilogram passenger in the elevator as it's moving, but we want to consider the passenger's apparent weight. Well, there's a whole lot of preparation to do in solving this problem, but you'll see by taking lots of time, lots of care with the prepare step, we'll be able to do the solution step actually quite straightforwardly. Now there's three different conditions, before the elevator starts moving, while it's speeding up, and after it reaches its cruising speed. But in each case, the basic situation looks like this. I have an elevator pulled upward by a cable, and I have a person standing inside the elevator. And we're considering the passenger. Now the motion of the passenger is the same as the motion of the elevator. They move together as a unit, okay? So if the elevator takes four seconds to reach its cruising speed of 10 meters per second, so does the passenger take four seconds to reach the cruising speed of 10 meters per second. And let's look at the forces that act on the passenger. And we do this as we did force identification diagrams previously. Look at the passenger in isolation of everything else. There's two forces that act on the passenger. First off, let's look at the contact forces. The contact force, there's only one. It's the force of the floor. There's the normal force of the floor, which is pushing on the passenger. Then there's also the weight force, and the weight force is the long range force that's directed downward. The normal force pushes up, the weight force pulls down. That's it. Now, I want you to remember this. Weight force is with you always, but what you perceive as weight your apparent weight is just equal to the contact forces that support you. And in this case, that's just equal to the normal force. So if we solve for the normal force, that's going to tell us what the apparent weight of the passenger is. So there's only two forces that make a difference in this problem. One is the normal force, one is the weight force, and if we solve for the normal force, that's the apparent weight that we're looking for, because what the passenger actually perceives is the force of the floor pushing on him or her. Now let's do this. Let's do a motion diagram for the elevator. And we're going to have three different cases, A and B and C. Before the elevator starts moving, that's pretty easy. It's just stationary. In this case, of course, the acceleration is just equal to zero. Then we can look at the acceleration as the elevator is speeding up. Well, if the elevator is speeding up, successive points are getting farther apart, velocity vectors are increasing in length, and so as a consequence, there's an acceleration, and the acceleration is directed upward. It's a positive acceleration using our conventions. Okay, so there's a positive acceleration. And I'm going to put the y subscript here because that's what we, we, we refer to the signed component with the subscript. So the positive acceleration in this case. In the third case, the elevator is moving at a constant speed. It's reached its cruising speed and it's staying there. So the elevator is still moving upward. I'm still getting velocity vectors going upward, but they're the same length. So in this case, the acceleration is going to be zero as well. Okay, so we've got motion diagrams for the three cases. We have a force identification diagram for all, that's the same for all three cases, but the free body diagram is going to be very, very different. Now, there's only two forces that act. There's the normal force, there's the weight force, as we've seen. But for these three different cases, the free body diagram will look very, very different. In the first case, if the acceleration is equal to zero, the net force is equal to zero. And if the net force is equal to zero, we know that the upward normal force has to be equal in magnitude to the downward weight force. And so we draw a free body diagram this way. Same is true for the third case. The acceleration is equal to zero. The net force is equal to zero. The upward normal force is equal in magnitude to the downward weight force. And so these two free di body diagrams look exactly the same. Now in this case, there's an acceleration upward. And so we know this, okay? There's a net force and it's directed upward, okay? So the net force is directed this way. That tells us that the normal force should be bigger than the weight force, okay? And that's going to be an important piece of what we're going to solve later. So we've got our force identification diagram, we've got a motion diagram, and we have free body diagrams for the three different phases of the problem. But there's still 
something else that I want to look at. And I'm going to treat this as part of the preparation step, and that's this. We know the acceleration is greater than zero, but what is the acceleration in this phase of the motion when the elevator is reaching its cruising speed? Well, in that case, I'm going to draw one of these pictures that we saw in chapter two and chapter three. I'm going to draw one of these pictorial um, representations. Okay, so at the start of the elevator's motion, the passenger is uh, on the floor of the elevator, and it's not, mo not moving. Let's call this height zero. The initial speed is zero, and let's call the time zero as well. Now, four seconds later, so at a final time of four seconds, the passenger is moving upward, and we know the final speed. The final speed is 10 meters per second. And we don't know the final position, but it turns out we don't need to know that. We don't, we don't know what this is. We don't need to because we're just interested in the acceleration. And the acceleration is defined as the change in velocity divided by the change in time. Well, the velocity has gone from zero to positive 10 meters per second. The elevator is moving upward. And so the change in velocity is 10 meters per per second. The time interval required for that to happen is 2.5 seconds, and so the acceleration is 2.5 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration as the elevator is moving upward. With all this information in hand, now we're ready to do some solving. I want you to notice most of the work was in this phase. First off, just wrapping our mind around the problem, and second, setting things up, because with all this in hand, the solution is actually quite straightforward. We're looking for the passenger's apparent weight. We know that's just the normal force. So let's solve for the three cases in turn. First off, for case A, the net force is equal to zero. The magnitude of the normal force is equal to the magnitude of the weight force. And so that tells us this. The apparent weight is just equal to the magnitude of the normal force, and that's just equal to the weight force. Well, the weight force is just equal to m times g for a 60 kilogram passenger. That's 590 newtons. And so for part A, the passenger's apparent weight is the passenger's actual weight, just 590 newtons. And let's look at case C, because in case C, we have the exact same situation. The normal force is equal to the weight force in magnitude. So the apparent weight is just equal to the normal force, but the normal force is just equal to the weight force, which is just equal to 590 newtons. So when the, when the elevator is sitting still, the passenger's apparent weight is equal to the passenger's actual weight. When the elevator is moving upward at a constant speed, the passenger's apparent weight is equal to the passenger's actual weight. So these two cases actually have the same apparent weight. The only case that's slightly more complicated is case B, while the elevator is speeding up. Now let's take a look at this. The normal force is bigger than the weight force. The net force points upward. The magnitude of the upward net force it's just equal to the upward normal force minus the downward weight force, okay? So writing in terms of magnitudes, we have this. But the magnitude of the net force is just equal to the mass times the acceleration. And the acceleration is directed upward. So we can write this. The normal force is equal to m times a plus w. Now remember, the apparent weight is equal to the normal force, but the normal force is now equal to m times a plus w. So it's equal to the passenger's mass, which is 60 kilograms, times the passenger's acceleration, which is 2.5 meters per second squared, plus the passenger's actual weight, which is 590 newtons. We have everything we need to be able to solve this, and if we do, we come up with an apparent weight of 740 newtons. And that's just equal to the normal force of the, of the floor of the elevator on the passenger. Now let's do a quick assessment. The apparent weight is just equal to the contact force supporting a person. In this case, it's the normal force of the floor of the elevator on the passenger. You know when you're sitting still in an elevator, you're not accelerating. The normal force is equal to the weight force 
net force is equal to zero, you feel like you weigh what you actually weigh. The apparent weight is just equal to the actual weight. The same thing is true if the elevator is moving at a constant speed. If you're moving at a constant speed, there's no acceleration. You don't feel heavy. You don't feel light. And when you're moving in any contraption at a constant speed, your, your apparent weight feels the same as your actual weight. That makes sense. But in this third case, the elevator is accelerating upward. And you know if you've ridden in elevators that if you're accelerating upward, you feel heavy. The passenger is going to feel heavy. And you've experienced this before, but it's only during the four seconds that the elevator is actually speeding up that you're going to sense this. And this number is bigger than 540 newtons, but it's not dramatically bigger. You'll feel slightly heavier, but that's not enough to make you crumple to your knees. This is going to be okay. Passengers can withstand this. So in, in the case of part A and part B and part C, our expectations of what the answer will be match what we get for the problem. The apparent weight is the same as the actual weight in part A, same in part C, and in part B, you feel heavier. And so our assessment shows that the actual answers to the problem match our expectations of the way the world works.